Let's all stand and turn to 359. 359. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide and the dewy eve, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, fearing neither clouds nor wind or chilly breeze. By and by the harvest and the labor ended, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, going forth with weeping, Sowing for the master, though the law sustained our spirit often grieves. When our weeping's over, he will bid us welcome. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. I'd like to say good evening. Good evening. Certainly it's good to see you tonight in the Lord's house. Appreciate you being here and, and trust the Lord's going to help us uh, tonight. And uh, some may have had to rush around a little bit from work and other things and getting it all together to be here. I appreciate you working that out and being here in the service. And certainly it's good to see you and trust the Lord to help us. And uh, tonight I'm trying to preach on hallelujah, what a Savior. And trust the Lord to help in studying the message I ended up uh, thinking, and the verse came to my mind, 1 John 4, 19. And I thought, praise God, we love Him because He first loved us. And uh, He certainly did. I want to look at some things and talk about forgiveness and justification. I've said this before, and I've thought about that a uh, number of times. That, and Jesus said that in uh, Matthew chapter 11, you know, verse 28. Uh, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And then verse 29, he said, learn of me. And I was thinking, and many of us had the privilege of growing up in Sunday school and uh, in, in church, and I, I knew quite a bit uh, from that just in learning. But uh, how little I know and how little I know tonight, and I'm learning of him. And uh, from the scriptures, and such a blessing, and uh, we keep learning, and I want to try to look at two things tonight, and I was thinking about the great doctrines, the great doctrines of the Bible, you know, there's a verse that said, the things, the things which become sound doctrine, and there's some major themes in the Bible, and two of them tonight we won't look at, and one of them is forgiveness, and the other one is justification, and uh, kind of parallel the two and talk about and, and the difference. They are different, distinguished from the different. And uh, they're all ours in Christ. And I was thinking about what a blessing that is. They're all ours in Christ. And Pete, if you'll give me that, I'm going to try to get into here. Uh, when a person is placed in Christ, uh, he, he partakes of all that Christ is. Uh, when, we, when we're in Christ, and I might just read the other there, John emphasized the truth of forgiveness 
And we're looking in the book of John, chapter 1 John, 2 and verse 1. Uh, I write unto you that you sin not, but if you do, you have an advocate. Advocate. And Paul, he develops the parallel truth of justification. And we'll look at that. And Jesus Christ, the righteous one, uh, he takes away our sins and replaces it with his own righteousness. And uh, when one is placed in Christ Jesus, he partakes of all that Christ is. First uh, Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. And I looked that up before I left the house. I was thinking, and it says there that he was made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and uh, redemption. He was made unto us righteousness. And whenever one is in Christ, we partake of all that Christ is. And what a blessing that is. And it's going to cultivate an end with you and I that are saved being just like him. So I'm excited tonight, amen, about what we have in Christ and what a blessing that is. I was thinking and I grunt and carry on, you know, throughout the day and <laughs> try to get going and, and, uh, and all that sometime. You may take a little while to get cranked up, you know. I thought about uh, Brian mentioned in children's church about, or in the opening, rise and shine. And I thought about one fellow, somebody said, rise and shine, brother, rise and shine. And he said, I might rise, but I refuse to shine. So we, <laughs> sometimes it's easier rising than it is shining. But if we can get both of them together, we got something good, haven't we? I'm happy in the Lord tonight. We want to look and trust the Lord to help us and, uh, in the message. So that's a little preview of uh, what's on my heart tonight. Uh, we'll take some prayer requests. There's some urgent needs of prayer that I know about. And uh, no doubt you've got things and praying about. And so we'll mention maybe something to be mentioned tonight for prayer. Y'all can remember the folks up at the, uh, at the rehab center. Um, somebody came down with what they believe is COVID, so they're locked down, which means they can't really leave their rooms. And it's been that way for more than a week now. So if y'all could pray for them, that's, I mean, they're there, they're long term residents, they can't go nowhere. Remember that. Remember that. Something else to mention tonight. There was a young couple that died tragically last night. We need to remember their family. Yes, yeah. I, I appreciate, Kim, you mentioning that. And uh, that uh, situation, uh, at least one of them, uh, is uh, very close to our family. And uh, so it's uh, such a tragedy in that to uh, remember that. Uh, in fact, to be quite honest with you, I, uh, I was up till two, about 2.30 last night, and we were as a family, and we was trying to pray, and, and uh, it's, uh, it's just been on my mind ever since, and it's really a need of prayer there. The Lord of help. Thank you for mentioning that, and let's pray. Let's pray about that. Maybe there's something else to be mentioned tonight. I got a praise report. Uh, our grandson, Winston, most of y'all know, he uh, came down, he had appendicitis uh, yesterday. And he did surgery yesterday afternoon, and it had birth. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.
<clears throat> might mention uh, Susan. I spoke with her today, and she'd been back to the doctor, and uh, they did an X-ray and said everything looked good, just the way it needed to look. And uh, she kind of joked a little and said she's hoping that her feelings will line up with the x-ray, you know. Sometimes they can look, <laughs> you know, the x-ray can look good and you want it to look good, uh, but sometimes the feelings ain't there yet, but let's pray for her. She was rejoicing in that, that uh, things is looking good, so that was the news she wanted to hear. And so keep praying for her. Maybe something else to mention. Well, let's, let's pray tonight and, uh, and ask the Lord to help us. And uh, Michael, how about praying for us? We. to prayer tonight and again we appreciate you being here in the service I want to read a few verses to start with and uh, look, look at them look at some others as the Lord would help us and I was thinking in trying to study this or study any message I, I never think that I'm studied up I guess would be a word to get to maybe where you, you, you feel at some kind what of a comfortable level but uh, then there's so much more. There's so much more uh, to be learned. And, and you know, I was thinking, I appreciate you being here tonight. It's pretty obvious you being in the service tonight. Uh, you know, Jesus said, learn of me. And uh, each one here has got a desire for that. Uh, otherwise, I don't believe you'd be here. So I appreciate you coming. I trust the Lord will give us something from the Word of God. I, I've, I've preached to many of the time. I've preached to many of the time. And beat myself up and and I believe it, I was guilty and I felt like I'd cheated the people. I, and so I trust the Lord to help us tonight. I, uh, I'm, finding, I'm finding a little bit more of a struggle in studying. It, this is nothing to, and I, I need to, to, please don't take this. I, my, my family, I, I've, I've wore them out. I've told you about that, you know. And they pick at me now, you know. Said, so tell them about this, tell them about that. If we meet somebody new, I... Papa, tell them about, you know. But, uh, so I'm trying to study tonight. I'm, and, uh, you know, you, you uh, I just, uh, struggling, I read, I told Beverly, I said, I couldn't even get a thought. I couldn't even get a paragraph. I fell asleep. You know, just, uh, I don't like doing that. I was thinking, and I don't know, Sunday, if Petey, he was up here teaching, did, don't tell nobody, but you, did you see me falling asleep a time or two? I don't know if I was or not. I, I was just trying to keep myself awake. And there ain't no reflection on the teaching. It's just a problem I've got, you know. Uh, I had a fellow in my church used to. I told you about him. There at Maranatha, he just, he couldn't help it. He just come, you know, I was a little, little critical of him there to start with until I found learn. So now, uh, you better not be criticized anybody that's got any kind of a situation because, you know, then when it comes to you, you say, well, well, I wish I could apologize to him for feeling the way I did. But uh, the Lord's good. The Lord's merciful. He's just merciful. I don't I don't try to look. I'm thinking tonight in, in, in Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. And therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in the book of Romans chapter 8, one of our memory verses, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And then on down in the book of Romans in 33 and 34, and it said, Who can lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. And I'm trying to, I want to use that verse for this reason. 
and I'm trying to preach on forgiveness and justification, and it's God that justifies. And who is he that condemns? Who is he that can con- condemn? Uh, it is Christ that died, yet rather is rose again, is at the right hand of God, who also make of intercession for us. I'm glad he's there making intercession for us. And then our verse in the book of 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1. My little children, these things I write unto you uh, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Our Heavenly Father in Jesus' name, thank you tonight for the Word of God. For our verses, may you help in expounding those and others as you would lead and help. Thank you, Lord, for each one here tonight. The prayer request that's been mentioned, the family that's suffering uh, in, in such a loss that on last night the tragedy and then the other needs been mentioned here tonight, praise report of God moving and helping and uh, just various needs, Lord, to be prayed about. Uh, many of them that's not mentioned tonight that's on our heart and I pray you'd help us. We thank in Jesus' name, amen. In the book of 1 John 2 and verse 1, praise God we have an advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous. Now an advocate is one that pleads another's cause, another's case. That's what he's doing for you and I. The book of Romans, he's making intercession for us. Now we, we understand from the scriptures, way back in the book of Job, where the, the devil presented himself there, you know the story in, in, in accusing Job. Uh, well, we read in the book of Revelation that he is the accuser of the brethren, and I still believe he's up to that. He's still doing that, uh, even as we speak tonight, and accusing the brethren. But you and I are to say, praise God, and I believe this of all my heart, that uh, whenever he accused the brethren, I mentioned about we accepted in the beloved, we're justified. And I'm going to try to develop that further about uh, what justification is really all about. And whenever he accuses us, uh, then somebody has said, and I believe they were right there, and all Jesus would have to do, just raise that nail, those nail-scarred hands, amen, and he can silence the devil. And in fact, uh, where is that, PD? I had something about it. Yeah, how effective Christ's finished work is. How effective Christ's finished work is that God put our sins under the blood and beyond the reach of recall. <laughs> uh, Recall, praise God, beyond the reach of recall. Is it in the book of Hebrews 8, somewhere about, uh, for I'll have mercy into the, uh, for I will be merciful to their unrighteous, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. He's put them beyond recall, praise God, and I thank God for that. So we're looking tonight, we're thinking, and in forgiveness, in forgiveness, God accepts the fact that His Son has explicitly pleaded for us. And in justification, uh, God accepts the fact that His Son has exchanged places with us. Uh, He's our substitute. Somebody said that He not only died for us, but He died as us. Praise God, by the grace of God, He tasted death for every man. So in justification and in forgiveness, two great themes in the Word of God. And I'll develop that in the Lord of help. Thank God we have an advocate. Aren't you happy? And I'm happy about that, aren't you? And we're, we, we experience forgiveness, and then we're justified in the sight of God. Somebody simply uh, used a simple definition and said it can mean as though we never sin. And I'm glad that he, in the book of 1 Corinthians, again, verse uh, chapter 1, verse 30, he has made unto us wisdom and, and righteousness and, and sanctification and redemption. He has made unto us the righteousness. For he who knew no sin was made to be sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And in studying this, I was rejoicing, and I thank God, what we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, what we have in him, and have what a blessing that is. And we love him, thank God tonight, because he first loved us. And I believe this tonight. Whenever we begin to understand, I was talking about being in, in church and learning some things growing up. Many of you had that same privilege and opportunity. But uh, I believe after a person's saved, we just keep learning about what uh, God has done for us through the Lord Jesus Christ. And it just gets bigger and bigger. And I believe this tonight, that that is a true motivation for service and for the Christian and for dedication and consecration whenever we learn and understand more and more 
of what he'd done for us, then that, we, there, there's an appreciation that uh, comes along with that in our hearts. And there's a motivation to serve him and uh, present our bodies a living sacrifice. And it's through that of what he's done for us. I believe learning of him, and that'll do that. And uh, that'll do that, I believe, greater than, uh, you know. And we need a little of that, a little of beating over the head, amen. And uh, <laughs> beating over the head. We need, you know, sometimes a little urging and pushing and all that that comes along. That uh, a little reproving maybe along the way. But it seems to me as we're learning what he did in studying this, I, I, I just have a, I, I, and that's the title of my sermon. I said, hallelujah. Hallelujah, what a Savior. So we're looking tonight and to ask for forgiveness implies something. And I was thinking, uh, my grandson asked me, you know, Michaela had the children's church and said, well, all got sin. She wrote it and did an illustration sin. And you know, the first, in the book of 1 John chapter 1, is it verse 5 said, if we say we have no sin, that we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And it didn't stop there in the very same chapter. Where is it, Pete? On down there, verse 8 or somewhere or another. It said, uh, if we say we have not sinned, uh, we say, first of all, if we have no sin, then we're deceiving ourselves. Might be verse 10. I can't remember where it is, but uh, verse 10 it is. And if we say that we have not sinned, uh, we make him a liar and his word's not in us. So we're trapped there, aren't we? <laughs> if we say we have no sin, the penalty of sin, sin singular, and then if we go a step further and say, well, I've not sinned, uh, then we're making him a liar. We don't want to do that, do we? So Michaela, but my grandson Isaac, he asked me, he said, did you and, and Michaela talk? You know you know what she had in children's church and then come along for sermon. It looked like we'd got, you know, compared notes. And But uh, I'm thinking that, uh, this is, excited me, but I'm thinking that the Lord talked to both of us. It's what I'm thinking, and I'm believing that. And so he put it together. Well, when he puts it together, it's good, ain't it? And uh, it comes out right. Things that I've put together, you know, Michaela and I probably could have talked and tried to put something together and never come out as good as it did. And the Lord talking to both of us, you know, working it out. But to ask forgiveness implies this. Uh, to ask for forgiveness implies uh, that uh, we have sin and, uh, and that we cannot deny. We've got sin that we cannot deny. You know, to ask for forgiveness implies that there must be, you know, you can't issue a pardon unless somebody's guilty. So it implies that we cannot deny our sin and that sin has found us out. You know, the Bible says that in the Old Testament, be sure your sin finds you out. And then we can't contest it. And uh, then it proves us guilty. And then sin, sin is the basis of a plea for forgiveness. So we understand that. We go back to our verses. If a man say, I have no sin, and if he said he have not sinned, then, you know, sin is the basis for forgiveness. You know, why is forgiveness? If there's no sin involved. But uh, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. So we're thinking about forgiveness. Forgiveness. And then I'm thinking tonight on uh, some other thoughts, and I begin to parallel. And John emphasized, if you give him the back page, and we're already a long ways on this sermon, the front page. We've just breeze right through it, and I'm feeling good about the front page, and I hope the back page will emphasize the front page. Uh, John here in our verse, first uh, John 2 and verse 1, my little children, I write unto you that you sin not, but if you do, you have an advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous. Now, I believe in that one verse, we can see forgiveness, and we can see justification. He is, he is the righteous one. John emphasizes here uh, the truth of forgiveness. And then Paul develops the truth of justification. Jesus Christ, the righteousness, he's the one that takes away our sin and replaces it uh, with his own righteousness. His own righteousness. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, and I want to mention some things tonight. Forgiveness and justification Number one, forgiveness presumes guilt. 
but justification presumes righteousness. And he has declared us righteous, justified. Forgiveness, and I go on in my notes here in my developing the sermon, is conditional. But justification is unconditional, and it's an act of God that what he did, a one-time thing, he justified us. And somebody said it's a progression. If you want to look at that in the book of Romans chapter 8, and uh, the, the justification, as you said, how close is it to the, to, the, to, to the cultivation of things? Well, if I'm remembering that right in the book of Romans, as it progressed down through there, and it said we're justified, and then the next time you said, what are you waiting for after that? Praise God, we're waiting for glorification, amen. And it's going to wrap it all up. We're justified. And then we see forgiveness. God is merciful. But in justification, we see the justice of God. God is just. And that's to keep in mind the attributes of God if we want to say God is love and we praise God for that and His mercy and His forgiveness. But then in the justification, we see that God is just. And He does for us and, and positions us, we might say, as we go and we look at this, well, we see God is love. And then God is light. In the book of 1 John, again, it said that uh, God is light, and in Him, in Him is no darkness at all. If a man be in Christ, again, one of those things that I mentioned, we're partakers of what Jesus Christ is. And you say, well, what is Christ? Well, He's the righteous one, the Bible said in our verse, 1, Timothy, uh, 1 John 2 and 1, the righteous one. So we see that He is light. He's without sin. Somebody said that in order to get to heaven, we've got to be just as righteous as God is. And you say, somebody misinterpret that and they say, oh, there's not a chance for either one of us. How, how could any of us, you know, get to that point? Well, the fact of the matter is, none of us do get to that point. It's an act of God. It's his, what He does for you and I. Thank God to know what a blessing that is. So the forgiveness we see, we see in his, uh, his love, and then we see God is light. That's the justification side of it, that he's the righteous one. And then you and I partaking of who, of what Christ is, the righteous one, his righteousness. Paul says that and described that in the book of Philippians. He talked about, and he talked about in the book of Romans chapter 10, that the Jews were going about to establish their own righteousness. And they were ignorant, and uh, they uh, did not weren't mindful of the righteousness of God. He talked about in the book of, of Philippians again. In the book of Philippians, he said, going about to establish his own righteousness, which was the righteousness of the law. But then he said, praise God, the righteousness of faith, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, and being made righteous. Thank God by an act of God, justified. Justification, you say, how do we have that? Book of Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not only forgiveness tonight, but praise God, justified. Justified. You say, what are you thinking? I don't know if, you'd, if this would be the right uh, way to describe that, but if you want to talk about a step further, or if we, we compare the two of them, and praise God, you and I that are lost and sinners, we're guilty. We need both of them. But I'm glad we've got both of them in Christ Jesus. We've got that. And then it's conditional. You know, in the book of First John again, chapter 1, verse 9, it talks about if we confess our sin, He's faithful. He's faithful just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confessing our sin. You know, I was trying to preach Sunday about, uh, and I didn't develop all that the way, you know, uh, some of the thoughts that I've gotten, some of the notes that I've got, sometimes I don't. You know, sometimes I'll leave the service and you say, well, I didn't think too much of it. Well, a lot of times you don't get my big point, my main point, before I forgot it. Then I go home and say, boy, I wish I'd have thought of that and I could have put that in there. That was the big point. So maybe I'll remember some of the big points, some of them big points. You said, boy, them sermons are big. We just didn't hear it. We just, what we heard was the, the backside of something or another. But anyway, you know, uh, I was talking about, he's, uh, he's dealing with us now as sons. And it has to do a lot with our fellowship with him, not our position. Now I'm going on, that's gone down uh, 
somewhere else, our state and our standing. Let me just mention that while I'm looking at it. That's what forgiveness has to do, is our state. But justification is our standing before God. Our standing before Him. And He's justified us where we are righteous. We accepted in the Beloved. So you and I that are in Christ tonight and experiencing what Jesus is and that He's righteous, praise God, in standing before God and the devil come and accuse us and all Jesus has to do, just lift those nail-scarred hands. This is what I did for that one that you're accusing. And I'm the, I'm the advocate and I'm pleading in behalf of their cause. But justification tonight is what God enacted for you and I. And I praise God for that. It was a one-time uh, one time transaction, I might say that. And that being said, it makes it different from forgiveness. You say, why is that? Because forgiveness is needed over and over again. And Preacher Chris said a, a very a, a profound statement. One time he was preaching here, and he was preaching, he mentioned, talking about repentance. And he said, repentance is a big part of the Christian life. And I was listening to a preacher the other day, and he said, I've experience repentance more since I've been saved than I did getting saved. And he said, I've had to go over and over. First John 1, 9, confess our sin. He's faithful and just to forgive us. But then he's dealing with us as sons. And if we're too stubborn to submit ourselves under the mighty hand of God and confess to him and the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, judge ourselves, then we just go on headlong. You know what he does? He stops us with the chastening rod of God. Hebrews chapter 12. Every son that he receiveth. Why does he chasten us? Because we're his sons. And because everyone that he receiveth as a son, he loveth and he chasteneth. And he does that for the purpose and the reason to get us back in where we're bearing the fruit of righteousness. I know about the chastening of God. Any Christian been saved any time at all, any length of all, they know about the chastening hand of God. And so that's the way that's in dealing with us with sons. And I'm glad when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ, we won't stand there as a sinner. But we'll be judged as a servant. What we've done with what he's done for us, because when we stand there, we're saved and we're justified. And he's not dealing with us as a sinner no more. Thank God we've been justified in the sight of God, but he's dealing with us of how we've served him as a servant. And that's what the judgment seat of Christ, that's what will be the issues there. And if we've served him and we've had some silver, gold, and precious stone and it hadn't been all woods, hay, and stubble that burns up, then there'll be some rewards, thank God for that. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You know, we talk about the judgment seat of Christ. I don't believe there's anybody going to be breaking the line to get in there first. I don't believe so. But we stand there. But we see the not only the forgiveness, and that's another one of my points. Forgiveness tonight relates to the wrong, the guilt, the wrong we've done. But God enacting justification is uh, relates to the right, the righteousness of God, not righteousness that we have done, because it's it's an act of God that He does for you and I. And he justifies us through the Lord Jesus Christ. And it all comes about of knowing him as our Savior. It all comes about through faith. I mean, the righteousness that is what? Of faith. You say, how in the world are we going to get that righteousness, that justification you're talking about, preacher? Well, we're going, we're going to go back to uh, how powerful and how effective that the gospel is. Let me see if I can, what, did I have that, Pete, and you already showed it, but it wouldn't hurt to show it again, the effectiveness, the effectiveness. How effective is Christ's finished work? It's so effective that God puts our sins under the blood and beyond recall. And then it's so effective that he accepts the fact that the son explicitly pleaded for us in, in, and then in justification, he accepts us the fact that the son has exchanged places with us. I want to thank God for forgiveness and thank God for justification tonight. 
through the Lord Jesus Christ, believing in Him. And how powerful is the gospel? You know, I was thinking about that. I was listening to the sermon. I got all excited. And he talked about, I'm not ashamed, Romans 1, uh, verse 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, the Jew first and also to the Greek. And how powerful is it tonight? Praise God, it's powerful enough to forgive sin. And it's powerful enough to put us in a right standing before God. That's a blessing, isn't it? A right standing before God. I was telling someone Sunday, church I grew up in, we had a fellow that taught us that uh, nobody was saved, nobody knew they were saved until they got to heaven. And then the Lord, that God himself is going to divide the sheep from the goats. That's what he believed. Wait until you get there. You know, he missed the sermon that I'm preaching tonight. He didn't know nothing about the justification. Probably missed it and he didn't know nothing about the forgiveness and that we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. Thank God, forgiveness. And we come to him time and time again and forgiveness of of, uh, the sin. I I go back to my sermon Sunday. You say, what do we need forgiveness for? First of all, we need forgiveness in relation to sin, singular, the penalty of sin. And then what about sins? Praise God, he died for them too. And we can have the forgiveness of that as a son of God the forgiveness, I write unto you that you sin not. But he said, if you confess your sin, then it bring us back in fellowship with God. You know, it don't do any of us any good just keep going on and then repent it, sin, you know, and excuse it. And I've done that, you know, think up some reason to excuse it, you know. <laughs> and, you know, you just keep on spinning your wheel in the sand. Finally, when you just get honest before God and, you, and, you, and it's real hard to do sometimes, and you just say, I've sinned. Messed up. And then we start doing business with him. And he said, well, that's what I'm doing as your advocate. And I'm up here making intercession for you. And if you hadn't lingered so long and been so stubborn, and if you had admitted a lot sooner, you'd have been happier a lot sooner than what you are now. I'm bringing you back into the sweet fellowship. And like what one person said, said they were, and I might have been Harry Ironside said that he, he rode a lot and traveled on trains in his uh, ministry in, his, in that era of the time, 1800, and he died in 1951, I believe. Uh, but anyway, he rode on trains. But he said, you know, he's in a hurry. And, you know, we get in a hurry sometime. <laughs> and uh, he said that uh, the ticket person there at the ticket office or whatever it was, and he was in a hurry, you know, and you get, sometimes, you know, you get all these different directions, you're pulling this way and that way, and somebody's already got you upset and whatever, and you know, you take it out on the first person you see and all. Anyway, he said he spoke rude to the ticket person there, and, you know, through impatience, and he said he turned to walk away, and he didn't take but a few steps, and he turned back around, and he told the person there, said, I want to ask your forgiveness and tell you that I'm sorry. And he said, I'm a Christian. And he said, speaking the way I did, and he said, whenever I turned walk away, he said, the birds quit singing in my soul. And the bees quit humming. And he said, he apologized, he turned around, he walked away, and he said, the birds are singing again. (laughs) And praise God, the bees are humming. Forgiveness. Amen. Confessing. Sometimes we have to confess it not only to God and get it straight and then maybe to somebody else. So we see, I'm not ashamed, praise God, of the power. What power, what power is in the gospel? There's power of forgiveness, praise God, and there's power to justify you and I. So we're talking about justification. We see that not only that, but we're convicted in forgiveness as sinners. But praise God, I like this. In the justification, we're constituted as saints. You know, the Bible speaks of you and I as saints. You know, what is the Catholics or some of those religions, they give sainthood to people, maybe that's done died, you know. They figure they've lived a good enough life and give sainthood. Uh, You know, what a blessing you and I that know the Scriptures. Praise God, we could tell them the news said, praise God, I got sainthood a long time ago. Sainthood. You said, boy, you must be really up there. No, here's the problem is, I'm talking about forgiveness is our state. 
but the sainthood is our standing and what the Lord wants you and I to do, He wants to bring our state in line with our standing. And He wants us to be more saintly because we are saints and He's constituted as, as saints. It's something that He enacted and we're called to be saints. You say, you believe that? I believe in the sight of God. All believers tonight, we can affirm and say, I'm a saint of God. And somebody look at us and said, you don't live too saintly. And we never would have suspected that you was a saint. I said, well, I want to try to improve that. I want to bring my state in line with my standing. The state and the standing is all together there. And then, praise God, we're free from the penalty of the law through forgiveness. But I really like this. And, but we're full fellers of the precept of the law through justification. And you say, well, how in the world could you say tonight that you fulfill the law? I didn't. But you know what? The righteous one that I've accepted as my Lord and Savior, he did fulfill it. So in Christ tonight, I'm a fulfiller. I'm enjoying and I'm uh, partaking in what Christ is and the final of, uh, confirmation of it, I'm going to be just like Him. Somebody said, boy, you must have made some good turns in your life. No, most of them. You know, <laughs> I'm about like a fellow one time I was work, used to work at a warehouse and we had a guy come and the warehouse wasn't set up right and he pulled to the front of the warehouse. And so somebody went out there and gave him the good news. And Brother F.C.'s a trucker, and he's probably had some good news like that. And they told the trucker, they said, I hate to tell you this, but you're supposed to be at the back of the building. And there ain't but one way to get to the back of the building. You're going to have to back around the building. Mm -hmm. Well, it didn't bother that trucker. This is what he told him. He said, ain't no problem. He said, I went backwards more in my life than I ever have went forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and back it ain't a problem. And he got there, amen. So a lot of that's been my life, more backward than forward. But I'm a fulfiller of the law in Christ because he came not to destroy the law, what? To fulfill every precept of it. I've accepted him. He who knew no sin was made to be sin that I might be made the righteousness of God, what? In him. So in forgiveness... I'm free from the penalty of the law. But praise God, in justification, I'm a fulfiller of the precepts of the law. And I got to think about that. That's what we have in Christ. And somebody hear me preach a message, say, boy, that's a proud preacher, all that stuff he's got. No. And here's the fact of the matter is, without Jesus, I am a nothing. But in Him... I'm somebody headed somewhere. And I thank Him tonight that humbles me. And I want to humble myself under the mighty hand of God and thank Him and praise Him, get down on my knees and say, Hallelujah, what a Savior. That's what I want to do. And then whenever forgiveness, whenever God forgave us, you know what He had? He had sin in view. But whenever he justified us, and I wrote it down probably long, incorrect in my notes, Petey, but I should have written in there, in forgiveness he had sin in view, but in justification he had his son in view. Jesus Christ. There's a difference. And what a difference, amen. I'm so excited about that. And I hope, now somebody, and if I, if I have missed the nail several times, somebody can tell me. It won't bother me. You know what I'm going to say? Well, you give me the right hammer, praise God, and I'll try it again. <laughs> Amen. I believe this is what we have in Christ. We're justified. What a blessing. That word's a big one, ain't it? And there's a whole lot more in there than I ever found out. But what little I did think that I've learned here, it excited me that I'm justified in the sight of God because I'm accepted in the beloved. 
And the old accuser said, let me tell you what Roger did. And my advocate, all he has to do is just hold up and down, start hands, and said, he belongs to me. There was a time in his life when he believed through faith, the righteousness, which is of faith in the Son of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our ABCs admit you a sinner, believe that Jesus is God's Son. He had worked for the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8. Amen. And Philip said, and the eunuch said, here's some water, let me be baptized. And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, and he gave this testimony, and he said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And old Philip said, it's baptizing time. We've got somebody that just got saved. Isn't that a blessing? The gospel. Hallelujah. What a Savior. So I'm feeling good in the Lord. And I hope you are. And God's good. All the time. Appreciate your prayers. The needs that's mentioned tonight, let's remember them. Some real needs. And you know, I was thinking, life, we don't understand I think a lot of times how merciful God is. And the situation's been mentioned here tonight, a real tragedy. And I've said to Beverly several times over, I said, there's no way, there's no way that I could understand how someone is feeling. And that's the truth of life, isn't it? The only way you can understand how somebody else is feeling if you have experienced what they have experienced. And that's it. And then Paul said, there's a good obligation along with that. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 or 1 or somewhere. He said, the consolation that I have received of the Lord, then I can console somebody else with the same consolation that the Lord gave me. And if somebody's been through something, and that's the best people to help somebody else. If you've been through a certain crisis in your life, somebody called and we've talked to someone else and going through something, but it's something that we've been through. And Beverly and I talk, we, we know exactly how they feel. We've been through that. And it'll help us to comfort them, help them say, listen, you know, we've been through that. And I won't give you this encouragement that the Lord bring you out on the other end. Amen. Because he brought me out through that same circumstance. God's grace is sufficient. But it's hard to believe that sometimes when you're in the midst of the fire. But then I told somebody last night, I said, we've got to believe. And I, I want to believe with all my heart that God's able and God's grace. And I couldn't explain how God's going to do it and how he could ever do it. And I'm glad that I'm not there. And, and it's just through his mercy. You know, I had somebody one time said, because of what me and my wife do, we give and we're faithful and we do all that. And that's the reason God favors us so much. <laughs> Boy, I won't want to travel on what I've done depending on how God's going to treat me. <laughs> but I'm going to cry out for mercy, amen. I ain't wanting justice at all. I'm wanting mercy, amen. <laughs> Had a fellow one time, his pastor went with him to the courthouse and had him indicted for some trouble and stuff. And the pastor went with him and asked him, said, you want me to pray for justice? And he said, Lord, no, preacher. Pray for mercy. Let's get the prayer right. Let's stand tonight and pray. We're going to ask the Lord to help us. Maybe some needs on your heart, my heart tonight. Uplifted hand that the Lord to help us. Uh, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for salvation, for saving me. And Lord, I could wish that the sermon, that I could have done a better job but I, I rejoice tonight of what I believe that you've given me a little, just a little light to understand some things about forgiveness and justification in the sight of God. And it's all because of the work that was done, thank God, on Calvary. Without Calvary, we couldn't boast tonight in, in, in the Lord and praise you and say, what a Savior and justified in the sight of God. We can never claim that. Without Calvary and the work on Calvary, 
of your Son, the Lord Jesus, how we praise Him tonight. Lift His name up high. Name above every name. The needs its own hearts tonight. Lord, please, please help. Situation that we know about that's so tragic, Lord, please help. Please have mercy. Help the people involved and give grace. And may we pray and intercede and uh, be an intercessor prayer. And Lord, reach a throne of grace and ring the bell of heaven, praise God. And you sitting at the right hand, interceding and giving grace and giving mercy and giving strength. And you are our strength and not our refuge, our high tower. We run in for safety. We find it in Jesus. Help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.